Hi, this is Professor Earth, and I'm here in glorious Sun Valley, Idaho. And true to the word, it's sunny. It's really nice. We're in mid-September, mid and yet it's 70 degrees, glorious sunshine. But that's part of the problem, because when we look at global warming, this part of the world is going to warm like everywhere else. In fact, if we go forward 30 to 50 years, it's projected this will be like southern Texas. So if you go to southern Texas, you don't find trees. You don't find the things we find here. The climate is much, much hotter. And when the climate changes here, these trees are going to have to go away because they won't be in equilibrium with that coming environment. And the way they're going to go away is forest fires. But that's another story. What we're here today to talk about is the one big mistake that climate scientists are making that caused them to underestimate the future of global warming. And you see it all the time now. The last few years we've seen an acceleration of global warming and major climate scientists are saying, whoa, what's happening? I don't understand. The earth is warming faster than we predicted. Well, they've made one big mistake. And due to this mistake, climate scientists, even at our leading institutions, are underestimating future global warming. Let me explain to you just what that mistake is and what the future of global warming is going to be. Now, I know it sounds like I'm ripping on climate scientists, and perhaps that seems like something I shouldn't do, but let me explain. I, myself, Professor Earth, that's a pseudonym, not my real name, I'm also a climate scientist, but I'm retired. And I'm a particular type of climate scientist. I worked on paleoclimates, on the history of the Earth and climate change. And when you work on paleoclimates, you are forced to do interdisciplinary research. You might reconstruct past climate, but then you also want to reconstruct past atmospheres. You want to reconstruct past uh, atmospheric circulation and ocean circulation. So you're forced to think in an interdisciplinary way, and you're forced to look at all kinds of different data. Modern climate scientists are often very siloed. They know their own specialties very well. Many of them are brilliant people. But if you're a climate scientist looking at a climate model and writing those climate models, then you're mainly working on climate models. Did I just say climate models? Well, that brings us to the one big mistake that climate scientists are making. If you look at climate models, they rely on something called the, the climate sensitivity number. And what is this number? It's a number that estimates how much temperature on the Earth will go up if we double CO2. The climate sensitivity number was first determined in 1967 by Bonabi and Weatherold. Well, that's 57 years ago, almost six decades ago. And this concept of the climate sensitivity number has been essential ever since for climate modelers. Basically, it means what temperature, how much will the Earth warm up if we double CO2? So it's very useful if it's real, because if, we, if there was such a number, then we could use, say, well, it's CO2 goes up 50% or 70%, and we could accurately estimate future temperatures. So naturally, climate scientists have been trying to determine this number for the last six, 60 years. And this graph that's up above that I'm showing shows a number of these estimates. And you can see they all have a range. They go from maybe two to five or even greater than five. So scientists have been unable to determine an accurate climate sensitivity number. And they've tried all kinds of different approaches. This new graph shows some of these. For instance, they tried to model what the energy sensitivity number should be. They tried to measure it instrumentally. They've tried to reconstruct using paleo data. They've tried to combine these. Notice that the paleo data number goes above five. In fact, it suggests the Earth is most sensitive to changing amounts of CO2. And since I'm a paleoclimatologist, I think this is highly significant. We have one Earth, and we actually have done experiments on it in the past. We have doubled CO2 in the past. So we can tell from the Earth itself how sensitive it is, and it's more sensitive than most climate scientists believe, those who aren't paleoscientists, that is. This is such an important question that NASA has put a new satellite into space just to measure Earth's energy balance. And this is what they call the clouds and the Earth's radiant energy system, uh, or series satellite. And it can actually measure the energy balance, how much energy is going into outer space, how much comes in from the sun. And when it makes this measurement, we really had quite a surprise. Ceres is measuring all kinds of things, and the plot above shows the amount of extra energy that's being added to the atmosphere in Hiroshima's per second. Imagine Hiroshima bombs going off every second, adding to the heat to the atmosphere. That's what this plot is showing. And if you look at it, you can see that the number of Hiroshima bombs going off is increasing over about 20 years, which is all the satellite record we have. 
But over these 20 years, where CO2 has increased from 375 parts per million to 425, that's about a 13% increase. The number of Hiroshima bombs going off in the atmosphere, heat equivalent, has gone from about three to 12. In other words, it's gone up four times, 400%, much, much more than the percentage of CO2 going into the atmosphere. This proves there is no direct linear relationship between CO2 being added to the atmosphere and heat being gained. And the climate sensitivity number, well, it just blows up because it assumes there's a constant ratio. Not so. This is a nonlinear function. It's an accelerating function. And that's why the Earth's uh, temperature is accelerating. It's gaining warmth more rapidly because the energy balance is such that we're adding more and more heat to the atmosphere as we go through this process of adding CO2 and it's non-linear. The more CO2, we get a much, much larger amount of heat added for each increment. Now this Hiroshima's per second is not the total heat budget, it's the extra amount that's being added to the Earth's atmosphere that's changing Earth's energy balance and adding heat and causing global warming. And that's the whole ball game. That's why Arctic Ocean sea ice is disappearing more rapidly than science predicted. That's why wildfires are going off in places all around the world wasn't really predicted. That's why global warming is accelerating more than was predicted. Thank you so much. Have a great day.